My name is Chen. I am from China. My age is 26. Went to um, University of Washington in 2009 for my undergrad. Graduated in 2013. Just continued the master's in 2013 and then graduated 2015. Visual designer in the diamond business is called Blue Nile. We're basically the largest online retailer of engagement rings and diamonds and high-end jewelry. I went to school for um, basically UX design. What I learned is the full design circle from interviewing users, understanding their requirements, their needs, and then analyzing those data and convert those data to concepts, basically design concepts. Trying to understand their problems, find a design solution for that. Basically visual design is the last part in that circle. Um, before your product actually ships. You actually, at this point, you already got all your user research, you already got all your interaction design, how people are gonna interact. I would say there is never a general average. It all depends on first location, second experience level, if you're um, entry level or you're senior or you're even senior management. Also depends on the company size. Google, Microsoft, those type of big companies, they have pretty high salary. They can go from um, 100K to, I've actually heard, um, over 1200K. If you're working for a startup, 40, 50, 60, 70, so it's, it really depends on what type of um, companies you do. It really depends on your industry experience. Say, because um, I went to bachelor's and then I went to master's and then I went to their both um, at UW, both at HCDE major. I'd say during my bachelor's, I have some um, peers that already have several years of experience. And when they graduate, they're already a senior designer. Of course, that's going to increase their salary and then they're already senior level. For me, I didn't have that much of an industry experience. So even with a master's degree graduating, you're still fresh, you're still entry level. So it really just depends on your industry experience. I don't think it's like some other majors out there maybe, but this major really, really depends on your experience. The really best way to get into it is the internship experience. When you get to that job interview, they are looking at the candidates that are the same. The candidates they have are all very fresh, all have like two to three internship experiences. How do I pick the best out of from there? It really depends on what did you do on your internship. Of course, the company name also matters. If you're doing for Google, if you're doing for Microsoft, yeah, great. And or if you're only doing a startup, um, it's also great because I know lots of company they love the startup um, experience because it's more um, fast paced, it's more stressful. You probably do a lot more job than other people in the big companies because you know when when it streamlines to you, you got that piece. Mm -hmm. But for a startup, you you get the whole piece. Totally locked out. But, um, freshman year, I had two roommates. I was gonna go to civil engineering. After I think one year, I went to see the advisor, and she's like, "What's your GPA? Mm, I don't think you can get in." I had like three point four or five. I'm like, "This is okay GPA. Probably for international students, they're like three point eight or three point nine, but I'm like average." And she's just like. I was not super into physics. I hated physics. I suck at physics. So I went back to my dorm and I was like talking to them and then this one roommate said, Hey, why don't you check out which CDE? Um, I just went to talk to their advisor today. She's really nice and um, why don't you try it? You like design, right? I'm like, oh yeah. So um, I scheduled a meeting with their advisor. She is like explain everything about the major. At that time, I think it was um, um, just a few years back, it was still called technical writing. I didn't know anything about UX at all at that time. This was back in like 2010. Like she explained everything. She's like, you're basically the bridge between technology and users. My GPA was pretty good for that major. Got in and then, you know, along the way, I got more interested, so that's why I say I'm lucky because I didn't really know if I'm gonna be interested. 
but um, indeed, I'm pretty good at it. Part of the reason is because I didn't really have a clear plan for myself in my senior year. I didn't really start looking for a job early enough. At that time, um, I didn't really have a clear plan for my future. If I'm gonna stay in the United States or do I go back to China because all my family and friends are um, in China. And I lucked out again. <laughs> so pretty good. <laughs> Worked out. In my opinion, it depends on what you want to do in the future and what the major is. Um, if you're in like say, um, psychology or those very research um, focused areas getting a master's even getting a PhD is more valuable for myself academically I didn't get that much of a benefit out from the masters doing UX design most important thing is the practical experience that's a student visa as long as um, you're staying at school, um, your student um, status is valid, that visa you can always renew it. For international students, you have to study for, I think, a full academic year. I think you have to um, complete a full academic calendar year before you can get CPT and start work out of um, off campus. But before you can work on campus, I worked in the cafeterias. That was actually pretty helpful for me. Your language is going to be a problem. Your communication style is going to be a problem. Your cultural difference is going to be a problem. Even though you're like washing dishes or you're doing um, cash register, it's pretty easy for you to actually communicate with people and that's a great experience for me. If you are in the process of getting your degree, you can apply for CPT. That is a work permission the school gives you to work on whatever job that's related to your field of study. That is called CPT. That's before you graduate. And then after you graduate, you can apply for OPT. That's another thing that's the, the school will sponsor it, but you have to apply for it. You have to pay for it. You can only get OPT if you haven't used the 12 month of CPT. For graduate. You have to prove that your work is related to your study. For all majors, you have at least one year for OPT. And in this one year, you can apply for h one b or for green car. Maybe you get married, that's the easiest way to go. But So if you're in stamp major, you have three years of OPT after graduate. And um, lots of people, you don't really use up that three years because you got a job at Microsoft by three years you already have your H1B because you can have that lottery for three um, three times blah 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 if you calculate the time right in between the zero and 36 months of OPT you can actually apply for H1B but H1B is not school related at this time school is out of your way H1B is a temporary a foreign worker visa. You have to have your company to sponsor you and your company have to pay a couple thousand dollars and then you have to pay the application fee. Big companies, they don't care about it. The employers, if they have never hired international students before, they don't understand this. They just have this amount of visas to give out for H-1B visas. 20K for a master's, yeah, I think 65K, whatever number is, might be wrong, 65K for all the others including the masters who didn't get selected for that 20k so if you're a master you have two chances to be in the lottery to be picked i pretty much lucked out i think it's definitely harder than the um, green card holders or citizens all the companies you know that for sure sponsor are the big companies that everybody wants to get in. Mid-sized companies, some of them you know that they for sure they sponsor. Some of them you're not really sure they might sponsor one or two in the past. That's where my situation is with Bull Nile. We didn't have that many um, international students before. So it really was not like a routine stuff they do every year. They probably started last year or the year before. There are lots of startups in Seattle area that has huge funds. They probably sponsor you. For some startups, they don't. The world is that big, but your choice is this little. The first one is um, language. I came here like eight years ago. We have to present our design. If someone asks questions, you have to respond with um, pretty logical 
reasons behind your design. Otherwise, we're just doing like out of nowhere creative work. But language is really, really hard. It is, especially for international students. Of course, we're all not native at all. That would be your biggest challenge, especially at beginning. When looking for jobs, um, you got no problem presenting your resume. Or for us, we have portfolio. When it comes to the interview, when people try to talk to you, they really, all the candidates in front of them are basically the same. They're really looking for whoever is a fit in their culture. But that comes to the benefit too, because you're from another culture and like I am from China. I grew up in China, um, I, I shop in China, so our company has an office in China. I can help them translate some email promotions in China. Multicultural background is actually um, a huge plus in some cases. So when I went to master's, I was super aggressive because I only had two years. That means one summer, and then summer is the largest chance you get internships for all the companies. Like September, October, I am already going to all the career fairs. There are like a lot of career fairs at UW, like a lot. Whatever career fair, like, a business career fair, I went there. I was super aggressive. Starting early, one of the benefits is you're gonna get calls pretty easily. When you start early, it's okay. You still got time if you don't get um, interviews, if you don't get internship offers. If you totally failed an interview or you just can't talk at all, it's okay because you still got time. You get more experience about interviews. It is a job that you get good at when you do it a lot. I have some fails. You have to experience that because you have to get used to it. Exactly. It's not like you're bad or something. They just don't, you just don't match. It's really about matching. Mm -hmm. On my way to school one night, this lady called me. They're like, Hi, it's this child. Hey, um, we're, we're from Concur. We met like a month ago in a career fair. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember you. And then <laughs> they're like, um, oh yeah, we have like an in-campus interview session tomorrow scheduled. And we're scheduling all the people. Would you like to come? Yeah, I am um, looking for a UX design internship. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I'll, I'll mark it. Very interesting. I went there, all the candidates are software developers. I actually um, called to confirm. I was like, I, I'm looking for a UX design. If you're looking for software engineers, uh, you, we, we don't waste our time, we're, we're both good. They will have you talk to two different um, interviewers. The first one I talked to, he's like, Oh yeah, so what do you do? Wait a minute. I was like, I appreciate the chance, the opportunity, but I am looking for UX design internships and I don't know coding at all. Oh, that's fine. Then we can talk about the new iOS system. I think the iOS just released oh. a new version that around that time. Okay. My second one was with this design manager. He helped me did like a little design exercise. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It's usually design something or design uh, elevator for 100 floor. That's, yeah, Amazon asked me that same question. I think it was either that afternoon or the other morning. I. I got their call, they're like, Oh, hey, uh, we'd like to like, give you an offer, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, great. Like, I didn't know Concur at that time. I, I had no idea who they are. I started to get lots of calls about interviews, and then I also get this Amazon one. Um, I didn't feel like I'm gonna get the next round or get an offer. And then um, Amazon caught me. They're like, hey, we'd like to um, have you in for an interview. <laughs> What? <laughs> the interview went pretty well. They had like two or three person each for half an hour, I think. They asked kids some really hard questions. Mm -hmm. You feel like really stressful during that interview. I got their phone call. They gave me an offer. I'm like, what? I kind of feel like it's because I was super relaxed. I already have a backup plan at that time. I think that might be the key to be relaxed in interviews and then you're gonna luck out. <laughs> at that time, I was like, Amazon, I don't care. And that was not good because if it's good company, if it's large company, go for it because they usually give you return offers. Yeah. Mid size, small size, plus concur got acquired. The biggest tip to an undergrad is to plan early, have a very clear purpose. The biggest problem is usually the planning part. If you don't have a plan for what you want to do, how you're gonna do it, and if you just realize this in like the 
the last three months of your senior year like me, you're not gonna get a job. It's it's really just start early and then really have a clear plan, clear goal. And then when you have a clear goal, you're gonna know what you're gonna do. Most internships, they are just helping you yeah. to establish a career. The summer before you graduate, you're gonna get an internship, start early, really. Junior year, um, summer internships, are there, there are tons out there. Don't just aim for like Microsoft, Google, um, Apple, Adobe. Don't just aim for those big companies. Some startups really helps me a lot. It's how I, I interned at a start, local startup. Because mm -hmm. for startup, you do everything. Most of the time, it was me and my manager. So um, we have you have to wear lots of hats. I might be actually better than someone who joined Microsoft and then for like 10 years doing the same thing. In big companies, there are so many teams. Mm -hmm. Teams are different than teams. So you might be getting just this tiny small piece in this team, but when you transition to another team, you might wear lots of hats. You, don't, you never know. Mm -hmm.